Hi there, this is Lloyd Barnes from Lloyd K. Barnes Photography, and today I'm going to show you a retouching that I did for a pinup photo with model Christina. And here on the screen on the left is the raw file, which I have done some work with uh, in Lightroom already. And I'll show you uh, basically what I did with that. And on the right is the finished one, which I did in Photoshop. And the purpose of the retouching was to give it a more vintage retro look like in the style of the pinup uh, more paintings and uh, artwork that was done in the 40s and 50s. Okay I'm going to start in Lightroom and what you see on the screen is the original photo uh, in raw format as it was taken from my camera into Lightroom and I did make some changes in Lightroom first before going into Photoshop and on the left is the history showing all of those changes which uh, which I made and I'll just uh, up, just give you some information about a couple of them. Um, I'll just skip right to the end here and as you can see that's the difference and really what I've done is a slight crop and down here these dots are uh, local adjustments using the over here on the right the graduated filter and I have reduced the exposure slightly uh, around the edges and I, I find that sometimes the graduated filter is a great way to adjust the exposure there's all sorts of other things you can do with the graduated filter it's a great tool to use in Lightroom um, it's an alternative to using the vignetting tool if you're familiar with that in that it allows you a little bit more um, uh, tweaking exactly where you want the exposures to be darkened or lightened uh, the other things I did was increase the contrast a little bit so that she's a little brighter versus the background and I had a few um, dust spots on the couch that I removed using the spot removal tool which you can see here on the right which is very handy. Uh, I also did some more of that in Photoshop. Okay so from Lightroom I'm going to bring that into Photoshop and the easiest way to do that is just right click on the image and go to edit in and edit in Photoshop and let it load up in Photoshop. Okay so I'm in Photoshop and the photo is uh, just a single layer right now and the very first thing I typically will do before I do any retouching is just make a copy of that layer. The reason for that is so in case anything goes wrong I do have the original layer to revert back to and get uh, recover in case for some reason uh, I needed to do that. Now uh, I'm not going to show you all of the detail of all the steps that I took in the retouching but uh, there is a great tutorial which is the one that I used as a reference and that is on planetphotoshop.com so this is the URL here www.planetphotoshop.com slash pinup effect and this one has the detailed step-by-step -step that uh, you could use to follow the general technique that I use. In my photo uh, it's a little different. There's a black or dark background compared to the one in the other image which has a light background which does have an impact on the uh, amount of uh, contrast and the adjustment layers that I used. But uh, I will show you uh, basically the steps that I took plus some additional ones which are relevant to this particular photo and uh, you can always go back to that tutorial to to follow in more detail what to do. I'm going to switch over now to the file which I actually did all the work on and I've already got that loaded. I'll just switch over to that window and I've turned off all the other layers at the moment so you can see those are all the different adjustments and, and touch-ups I've done and just go to the background layer which is the same as the one we just looked at but this time I'm going to zoom in very close on the model's face just so you can see uh, the detail in the skin because the first step is a skin smoothing and so I'm going to turn on that layer and you can see the difference maybe go in a little bit closer and I'll just turn it off and then on again so you can see the skin's much smoother that was done using the filter uh, the blur filter, surface blur filter, so blur, surface blur. And the amount, uh, radius and threshold will depend on your particular image, but in my case I went with a uh, 5 and 9. 
Now, uh, the other thing I did here was just smoothed out her lips a bit, so the glare looks a little bit more like a painting. And that was done using the smudge tool, which is over here, and just on a low capacity, low opacity, uh, and changing the it's a pretty soft, small brush and a strength of 10 or under, just brush over her lips. Also did a little bit on her hair as well, so I'll just turn that off so you can see, just to give it a little bit more of a painting look. The next couple of layers just increase the highlights on her skin a little bit, and I'm just going to turn them on so you can see the effect. And the amount of those depends on your particular image, and uh, the, the other video on uh, Planet Photoshop shows you how to do it. But basically, uh, you need to select the, the luminosity uh, on, your, on your photo and make a copy of that. And in that selection, uh, change the blend mode to vivid light and adjust the opacity to the level that you think will look appropriate for your photo. And also to take the selection and fill it with white and make the blend mode soft light. And again, the opacity can be adjusted to give you the amount of that effect that you want. In my image also, I'm just going up to the next layer, uh, the model, I wanted to adjust the model's toenail uh, nail polish. So I'm just going to zoom in so you can see better. As you can see, she just had a clear nail, nail polish. And I'm going to turn that layer on, and I just made it into a pink. And I adjust the opacity, but I'll just show you. I could have made it more vivid, but I didn't want them, her toes to, to like overwhelm you in the picture, but I just wanted them to suddenly be there. And that was uh, done by creating a new blank layer, just by pressing this little button here and selecting the paintbrush tool and choosing a color. In this case I just chose some red. And then just uh, cha changing the blend mode to color on that layer and then just painting over her toenails. The nice thing about doing that on a separate layer is if something, if you kind of go over the lines or whatever, you can just erase them using the uh, erase tool. So it's very easy to get the effect that you want. The next layer above that is one I've named lines and to see the effect of that I'll need to zoom in. So I'll just zoom in here and I'm going to turn on that layer. So just take a look right along here. This is where an area where you can see what happens. So it's just enhanced the edges a little bit and again making it a little bit more like a painting and uh, you might be able to see it along the edges in different areas. So I'll just turn it off and on again, you can see here. And I've also added a layer mask to that, and I've, I've uh, reduced the effect of it. So I didn't want it to be as strong as it was in the other video. But uh, I'm going to turn off the layer mask so you can see what it would look like in full strength. So for example, this area here, turn it back on again. So I didn't want it everywhere. So uh, I used the layer mask and just painted black over the areas where I wanted to reduce the effect. The video on Planet Photoshop shows you how to make this line technique. Essentially, you make a copy of, of the last layers. So combine them and then like merge them and, and, and uh, copy them. And the filter is under this uh, sketch photocopy filter and you in this case I wanted a dark red which is the same as in the other video but you need to select your foreground color and then it will make like an edged uh, drawing and then change the blending mode again from that layer to multiply and again in this case I have full opacity but I moderated it by painting on the layer mask you may want to play around with the opacity of that layer as well next I added a little bit of digital makeup in her cheeks. So I'll just turn that on and again zoom in. 
and I just wanted to make her cheeks a little bit like she had rouge and I will turn it off so you can see the difference. Again a pretty subtle effect and I did it the same way as I did the toenails and I reduced the opacity here to, to 35 percent. I then took the layers which had already been uh, we've just been doing and merged them together to create a new layer which I called merged and the shortcut for that is just uh, select the layers you want to merge and then on the Mac go command alt and then the, the letter E and that will merge all the layers below it and then create a copy of those merged layers so you still keep the original layers but then you have a, a new copy which is basically everything combined below it that you've selected and with that merged copy I did some retouching and liquefying uh, basically to create a smoother looking uh, more ideal, idealized kind of pinup look. The next thing I wanted to do was just to improve the backburst. This was done in camera, but I wanted to get a nicer, more traditional pinup y type backburst. And that was done by creating a new layer and then using the gradient tool with a black and white gradient, as you can see up here. And it's a radial gradient which I just drew onto the onto that layer and changed the blend mode to screen. The other thing I did was add a layer mask and paint out the areas which I didn't want the backburst to be on. So I painted with black and I'm going to turn that off so you can see what it looks like without the layer mask. To turn off the layer mask just press shift and then click on it and it will have that X across it. So you can see that's without the layer, without the layer mask. It's just the backburst in screen blend mode, or that uh, radial gradient. So I'm going to just turn it back on again, and uh, so you can see the difference where I've painted back. So that that uh, backburst is not going to affect the the whole image. And then finally, the last steps were just uh, some dodging and burning and a curves adjustment layer. The dodging and burning are also curve adjustments, so I'm just going to turn on the burn one. It's very subtle. Basically, I just added a little bit of darkening to some of those highlights. And the dodge is also subtle, you might not notice. And that affects this area down here, which I thought was a little too dark. All right, I'll just show you what the burn and dodge curves are like. These are pretty standard ways of doing dodging and burning. So burning just to darken certain areas. Uh, I created a curve layer where I pulled it down, the curve, and then added a layer mask which I filled with black, and then just paint white over it wherever I wanted anything to be a little bit darker. And I'll show you what it looks like without the mask. Very dark. So. I've just added a little bit of darkening. The same thing with dodging, very similar, but it, you increase the curve like this to brighten the image. I'll show you again. That's what it looks like without the layer mask. Then with the layer mask I then just painted mainly just in that little corner as I said. The final step was just an adjustment with the overall curves and again it's a matter of taste. I did a pretty much a standard S-curve, but pulled the highlights up probably a little bit more. Again, because it's a kind of uh, painting look that I was going after. And that's it. Thanks a lot for watching my tutorial, and I hope it was helpful for you. If you do have any questions, please feel free to ask. You can put something in the comment section or send me an email. And until next time, thanks a lot.